Well, isn't that just typical? I'm trying to record this episode of the How to Be an Author podcast, and next door they are doing some construction work. So if you hear drilling, hammering, or anything else, this is just my life today. And actually, it kind of fits in with the theme just right when you really think about it, because today we're going to be talking about NaNoWriMo, which at the time of this recording starts in just a couple days. This podcast will be great for you to listen to at any point because we're not just talking about NaNoWriMo. We're talking about when it's the right time to do a challenge like this and how to make it your own. And many times it's definitely not the right time to be NaNoWriMo. There are too many distractions. There's too much going on. You've got work projects, home things going on, health issues, kid issues, school issues. And sometimes you think to yourself, you know what, maybe I should wait until it's a little bit more quiet in my life. But sometimes you're like, you know what, I decided to jump and I've got to go. And that's what I did today with today's podcast. Too bad for the drilling next door. We are going to be recording this because I think it's so important to talk to you all. Whether you've done NaNoWriMo before or you haven't, I want to talk to you about this very unique challenge. So in today's episode of the How to Be an Author podcast, I, your host, writing coach, Karana Akavane, will be going in a little bit of a different order. Usually I talk about discussions I've had with three of my writing clients, and we use those to discuss things like craft, mindset, and the business of writing. And today we're going to mix it up. I usually talk about craft first. We're going to be talking about the mindset stuff first because If you are still on the fence about NaNoWriMo, this can help you to just listen to the first part of the podcast. If you don't have that much time in your day, just listen to part one about whether you should or shouldn't and why. And then if it's super not for you, you can stop listening. But if it is, you can keep listening and you're going to get some really great hacks on not only how to win NaNoWriMo, because that's the goal for many of us, but how to truly make it your own and how to make it really work for you in your career as a writer. Because here's the dirty little secret that I'm going to let you in on right away. I'm not doing NaNoWriMo this year for a good reason. It's because I'm editing uh, one of my books and I need to finish it (laughs) ASAP. And uh, so it's not the right time for me. But a lot of my writers, I tell them, why don't you use NaNoWriMo to finish editing your book? Because that's a huge job. But the little admission that I need to make is that my last year's manuscript for NaNoWriMo, I won NaNoWriMo quite handily, quite well, and I still have that manuscript sitting in a folder in my computer. I've done nothing with it. So I don't necessarily want that to happen to you. So we're going to be helping other writers to not make the same mistakes I made. I think that could be a really great lesson as well. And before we keep going, I just want to say NaNoWriMo just lasts one month, but sometimes it's not really so helpful to challenge yourself for one month and then stop like I did. I mean, I was doing other things, but essentially I kind of stopped on that manuscript. And why just do a one month challenge when you can challenge yourself to go from idea to published in six months? And that's what my main offering, my masterclass program is all about. It is from that transformation that takes you from aspiring writer to successful author in six short months. And again, this program, you can make it your own, drag it out a little bit more, but I think this is something that can actually make your writing success dreams come true, and that's a huge difference. So let's jump on in to this episode of the How to Be an Author podcast about NaNoWriMo. I'm so happy you're here. If you're a writer dreaming of becoming a successful author, join me, writing coach Karenna Akavane, on the How to Be an Author podcast, your weekly source for writing information, inspiration, and motivation. So first, let's jump into a brief history of NaNoWriMo. Some of you absolutely know what it is. Some of you are like, what is a strange word my writing coach keeps saying? I don't understand what this is. Don't worry. Let's talk about a brief history of NaNoWriMo and what it is. NaNoWriMo is National Novel Writing Month. It happens in the month of November. I've often complained about this because November is kind of a uniquely busy month leading up to the holidays, and you've got Thanksgiving smack dab in the middle. For those of you who are interested, interested, I actually did a YouTube series that still, you know, it has aged very well. I did it a few years ago. It was a day-by-day video blog of NaNoWriMo. 
And this is when I kind of launched my whole writing coaching business. So you can go check that out on YouTube. If you go to my writing coach channel, you'll find that right there. Just look up NaNoWriMo writing coach, you know, on my channel and it'll pop right up and you can go day by day. So NaNoWriMo was founded in July, 1999 by someone named Chris Beatty in the San Francisco Bay Area. And actually one of my friends was involved with this. And she's got the original NaNoWriMo t-shirt, which I really want to steal from her, but we'll see how that goes. The idea was to create a fun, informal event that would motivate people to embrace their inner writer and help them to overcome the procrastination that often prevents people from pursuing their writing goals. I think that I've said this many times, once you go all in and you're just charging ahead, momentum is such a huge power. And that's one of the things that is really great about NaNoWriMo. And also is that whole jump before you're ready situation. It's just like, it's happening today, folks, do it or don't. And it really helps you to kind of overcome resistance as well. So I think that's a really great thing. So over the years, NaNoWriMo has grown in popularity and participation. So it's expanded globally. There are writers from all over the world now taking part in the NaNoWriMo challenge. And the organization behind NaNoWriMo provides a website where participants can track their progress. They can also connect with fellow writers and find resources and support. So I think this is kind of major because so many writers I know are like, okay, yeah, I'm going to do NaNoWriMo. And then when I've been in the years where I was participating, I would tell my writing coaching clients like, hey, okay, why don't we friend each other uh, on the website? And you can do that. You can kind of link up with fellow writers virtually. And I said, okay, keep updating your progress. And I would see that they weren't. They weren't making use of the website. Now, NaNoWriMo It's not just a thing. It's not just a challenge. It is a community. And that's something really, really crucial. NaNoWriMo is here to foster a sense of community amongst writers. We're often so isolated as writers. And last week I had a whole episode about solitude. And I think that it's really important to think about how can you encourage other writers and be encouraged by other writers. There are local meetups where writers share their experiences. They talk about their challenges, talk about their wins, and you work towards your writing goals together. And I think this communal aspect is really, really important. And maybe after NaNoWriMo, you'll be tempted to then join a writing community in the longer term. And this can help you to meet a lot of writing professionals as well. So it's kind of great. Remember, NaNoWriMo takes place in November, but it goes on beyond November. And the NaNoWriMo organization does have programs that have events throughout the year to help writers to refine and publish their work because so many authors go into NaNoWriMo thinking, I'm going to have a full manuscript at the end. I'm going to have a finished novel. Not so much. Cool your jets. We're going to be talking about what comes after NaNoWriMo towards the end of this episode. So stay tuned in. So let's talk about some of the reasons why authors would definitely want to participate in NaNoWriMo. I'm also going to do the flip side of the coin, why they might not want to do NaNoWriMo. So reasons to participate. You've been having issues with your motivation and your discipline. NaNoWriMo definitely provides a structured challenge that can motivate you to establish a writing routine and to develop the discipline that you need to complete a novel. That's not something that you're just born with. It's not always something easy to get. And I think that the lessons that you learn in motivation and discipline from NaNoWriMo last for a lifetime. And that's something that I have explained to quite a few of my writing clients. And that's where this episode is different. I'm not just focusing on one client. I'm talking about lessons I've learned from my clients and from myself as we went through NaNoWriMo. I can say wholeheartedly that my clients who've gone through NaNoWriMo successfully, even if they went under their own terms, they've gained so much confidence in the fact that yes, they can motivate and yes, they can buckle down. For me, it's been a game changer. Community support, they've learned that it really can help to overcome you know, the writer's block and the self-doubt. So for many of my writers, joining NaNoWriMo was the kick in the pants they needed to actually join more of a community. And that's really great. For some of my other writers who are so serious and who've been working on the same project for the same time, um, I think that NaNoWriMo is a really great way to be creative, explore new ideas. It's an opportunity to let go of perfectionism, let go of the genre you're usually writing in maybe, let go of the types of projects that you do, and just write for the joy of writing. Because after all, 
people sometimes say you can do anything for X number of minutes or whatever, but you can kind of do anything for a month. Let's be crystal clear about this. This is not a diet. This is something that really is building you towards the career that you wanted or towards a goal that you've had your whole life. It's such a great opportunity. And let me say that in terms of creativity and exploration, so many of us are scared. We've been working on a genre that's been working for us. We've pretty much mastered it. We're like, okay, I've got this. And we don't go look outside of that because we think, why am I going to break my momentum to explore this new genre, even if I'm a little bit interested? So what I did last year was a challenge where I said, you know what? I'm going to let my TikTok people choose my NaNoWriMo subject. And I basically threw out three ideas and I was like, if anybody else has anything else, and this was all in a completely different realm. Each of these subjects was a completely outside of my comfort zone project. And the TikTok viewers spoke, and I ended up writing something that was a little bit fantasy-oriented, but a little historical as well, and it was about um, Vikings and berserkers, which was such a fun world to dive into. But I knew that since this was something completely new to me, I needed to do another one of those things that I don't always do, which is plan ahead more. Now, I've trained myself to plan ahead. We're going to be talking about this because that's one of the success strategies for NaNoWriMo. NaNoWriMo forces you to adopt success strategies. Too many times we've been ensconced in a strategy that does not work and we've lied to ourselves and told ourselves that this is what being a writer is about. It's not. So we're going to be talking later in this episode about one of those ways in which NaNoWriMo kind of kicks your butt in terms of actually finding ways that work for you of creating and producing. Another reason why NaNoWriMo is so useful is the accountability. You know how you publicly declare a goal, like I'm going to write X number of words, or I'm going to start this business, or I'm going to lose 50 pounds. Publicly declaring it usually makes it more likely that you will succeed. Updating your progress on the NaNoWriMo website, it can help to hold you accountable. And that's why I'm always telling my clients, hello, I want to see your updates. Don't just lump sum update it at the end. I want to see how you're doing day by day or week by week. So accountability, this is a great way to do it. And honestly, it's pretty low pressure. Nobody's really looking at your progress on the website unless you're one of my clients and I friended you on the website. But otherwise, it's really for yourself. But being held accountable is one of the huge, huge pillars of being successful. This is why I have so many of my clients checking in each week in office hours because that's what helps them to keep moving forward. I give them homework and they, you know, do their work. And now that we don't have writing coach on demand, new clients anymore, because we are saturated, uh, we do have the From Idea to Published program, which actually has built in accountability. It's kind of awesome that way. Even the DIY author, you can kind of set up to be DIY accountable. I'll be sending you emails if you join that program for only 47 bucks. You get that accountability where I'm basically kind of email-wise checking up on you and you can always feel free to respond. And that's kind of awesome because it does help you to move forward. But okay, all of this is so positive and so sunny, but there are some reasons that you might not want to participate in NaNoWriMo. First of all, some of my writing clients, the pressure, the strict word count goal, and the time frame, it can really lead to burnout for some writers. And that is not negligible. Burnout, I always say this is something that you want to avoid at all costs. I have had some writers who have burned out because they were putting so much pressure on themselves. And I really hate to see that happen. So if you're going to be feeling far too much pressure, let me say, okay, it's not a reason not to participate at all. Many of my clients, we've worked out different ways of doing NaNoWriMo so that they can feel the community, they can feel the accountability, they can feel the challenge without having too much pressure that's going to create anxiety. So we'll be talking about that in just a little bit, but that's something really important to know about yourself. If pressure is something that is not productive for you, that's not happening. Now, another thing that I see a lot, not so much in my clients because many of my clients are embracing the fact that they want to finish their book on the earlier side because they know that the more books you have, the better it is marketing-wise, but not 
every writer appreciates the fast-paced writing style of NaNoWriMo. It doesn't suit their creative process. And it really, you know, they don't like the fact that they're drafting without revision. Because let me tell you, the difference between the writer who's going to finish and the writer that doesn't finish is that the writer that does finish is not editing as they go along. Editing is something that takes so much time. I really always stress the importance of editing. I think that rewriting is almost more important than the initial writing. But many people don't like the idea of writing so quickly. They want to be more intentional about it. They want to savor the process. And that's totally fine. But you've got to be very, very clear about the fact that that means that your book's not coming out as soon, right? You're not going to have as many books. And that's okay. That's fine. It really depends on what your writing goal is. A lot of writers have come to me and they're like, oh my God, you know, quality concerns. This is so discouraging because I get this first draft and it's horrible. Well, frankly, I think all first drafts are pretty horrible compared to what you can have at the end, but also all rough drafts contain diamonds. So for those of you who are so worried about revision and editing, writing takes time. Rewriting takes time. So I know that this can feel discouraging, but you know, you're going to spend the time somewhere on some end. And I always feel that when I have the critical mass of a certain number of words to edit, it really helps to motivate me. Like if I've got 10,000 words only and I'm trying to edit it before I move on, it feels like I've got a mountain to climb afterwards and it's too much for me. So I'd rather blurt out a bunch of words and have some gems in there and have lots of things to rewrite, but at least I'm editing something that always makes me happy. Finally, I mentioned this. I touched on it a little bit. One of the issues about NaNoWriMo is it's November. It's a busy month. You've got the holiday season. So if you've got significant commitments, family, Thanksgiving, school, work, participating in NaNoWriMo just might not be feasible this year. So you might decide, okay, I'm going to do NaNoWriMo until the week leading up to Thanksgiving. And so I'm going to do half of it. Maybe I'll do 25,000 words. Or you can tell yourself, listen, okay, this is not working out for me, but maybe I've got a bunch of classmates or maybe I've got a bunch of moms in my mom group who would love to do this, but they're like, this is not the right season in life. Why don't you build yourself a little NaNoWriMo group, call it something else, and you can do a NaNoWriMo style challenge in another month, but you're going to have to build in the accountability, the excitement, all of that. But I think that that could be a really, really good way of doing it. But I totally understand if November is not right, it is not right. But ultimately, it really depends on you. It depends on your goals, your writing style, your circumstances. It can be super rewarding, but there are benefits, there are drawbacks. So definitely keep all of that in mind and don't feel guilty if, you know, your friend over there is doing NaNoWriMo and they're guilting you into doing it. They're telling you that you're a loser if you're not. You're not a loser if you're not. You are just having to find a more individualized approach to your writing project. So how can you make NaNoWriMo your own? What are some alternatives? I mentioned that you can do NaNoWriMo or a NaNoWriMo style challenge in a different month, but there are other things that you can do. There are alternative ways to participate and win if the traditional approach of NaNoWriMo doesn't suit you. And you can put in your own writing goal in the NaNoWriMo website so that you are still participating in that way, but there are different ways. It's not just word count. So what are some of the other things you can do? Number one, I touched on this, an editing challenge. Editing takes so much time. It is so daunting. So instead of writing a new novel, why don't you spend the month editing and revising an existing manuscript? The goal can be a set number of edited pages or words or chapters. As I said, I've been editing something myself and it is a slog. It is harder going than you think. I'm hoping I'm going to finish it by hopefully the first week of NaNoWriMo, and then I'm just going to let it sit there for a little bit and take it up again because I'm going to be recording the audiobook, which I think is such a great way of editing a book, is when you read it out loud for the audiobook, all of a sudden, every mistake is glaringly obvious. So that is one way. Editing challenge, I think that's great. You could do an audiobook challenge. Challenge yourself to record your audiobook in a month. It takes a long time to record an audiobook, and I've done it in huge accelerated sprints. I definitely have 
the whole how-to of how to record an audiobook that is part of the course and DIY author. If you want to take those programs, you'll find out how to do your own audiobook. But this is something that you could do in a month feasibly. So maybe that's a challenge that you can do instead. You can also write a short story collection. Who said that you needed to write a whole novel? I mean, I know it's called Novel Writing Month, but short stories are great. I have clients who have written poetry for NaNoWriMo. They've aimed to have a certain number of polished poems. Because poems are shorter, you can actually aim for things that are a little bit more complete. That's a great way of going. I would say, you know, what about five short stories? That's such a cool goal, you know, or a certain number of poems or essays Anything like that is really acceptable as well for NaNoWriMo. You can also tackle a nonfiction book, a memoir, a research project, or even your, you know, if you're doing your thesis, you can do this during NaNoWriMo. You can set that word count that suits your topic and that it becomes really helpful for you. You're on this major deadline anyway. Might as well have the fun and the community while you're doing it. You can also team up with others. You can work on an anthology or a novel. Share the writing load with your friends. This is even more communal. It's super fun. Some of my clients have written screenplays or scripts and that's been cool. They've been done. They've done graphic novels or comics, or they've even blogged. When you're building your author platform, content is a great way to drive traffic to your site and increase your SEO. So you could do a blogging challenge where you do 50 blog posts or maybe 30 blog posts, or maybe even 10 blog posts. Or you could even say, okay, I'm going to do a certain number of TikTok videos or Instagram posts or Pinterest posts. And that's such a great way of batching that content. And then you can release it throughout the year. So remember that no matter whether you choose to write something different, choose a different genre or type of writing, or if you do even a hybrid approach. I know some clients who've done things where they actually combined writing with other creative elements like photography or illustrations or even audio to craft a multimedia project. One of my writers worked on a cookbook with poems, which was a beautiful project, and they used NaNoWriMo just because it's about fostering creativity and discipline. So feel free to adapt the challenge to your needs and interests. The most important thing is to set a goal that motivates you to work consistently throughout the month. So definitely set your own goals, maybe 50,000 words is completely unrealistic, change it. Choose your genre and style. Oftentimes also I recommend branch out, choose a different genre or style. Also what can really help is you can be super free to either plan it or pants it. There are some pantsers who write the novels by the seat of their pants. Other writers participate in something called Preptober, which is where they meticulously plan their novels before November. They have a clear outline. They have post-it notes. They have character descriptions, stuff like that. Oh, and actually talking about character descriptions, that's one of the other things I'm going to be talking about. A little cheat workaround for NaNoWriMo because I say that sometimes you can use NaNoWriMo. You can count your outline and your descriptions and your character descriptions for your character Bible, your location Bible, all of that, that can count in your word count if you decide it does. I think that's amazing. And also make sure to customize your schedule so that you can decide that you're writing at different times on different days. You know, that is totally fair as well. And I'll tell you how to kind of make that work so that you still have that momentum and that it feels like, it's working for you. So let's talk about now how to use this tool, which is NaNoWriMo to achieve your writing goals. I'm going to give you some hacks and some advice, both from me and from my clients that really help to increase your chances of winning NaNoWriMo. So we talked about planner versus pantser. Um, character, Character profiles, outlines, or a rough plot, this can really save you time during NaNoWriMo. But this is if it's right for you. I love to write scene by scene. And my major, major hack is using dictation or transcription. So for me, having an outline where I can be like, okay, here's this scene. Let's describe it and record it. And then I have my whole scene. That works for me really, really well. But if that doesn't work for you, so be it, right? 
Think about your writing routine as well. This is really helpful. With NaNoWriMo, I would say that one of the things, no matter whether you're a planner or a pantser, I would take an hour before NaNoWriMo starts to think about what are some of the sneaky ways that I can sneak in some writing each day. Is it early morning before everyone gets up? Is it evening before you go to bed? Is it during your lunch break? Is it dictating something while you're on the Stairmaster? One of my clients does this. She literally dictates things while she's on her Stairmaster. And yes, sometimes there's some panting involved and, you know, the Siri doesn't always understand her. We always curse Siri, but it's something that works for her in her schedule. So think about that. For me, when my kids were smaller, I used to sit in my car, I'd go to school pickup and I'd purposely try to come about 15 minutes early and I would sit in my car and I'd be able to tap out some words or record some words onto my phone or I'd bring my laptop. So all of that really works very well. Definitely make use of writing sprints, Pomodoro method. This is such a great way of boosting word count and keeping you focused. Such a great hack for NaNoWriMo and beyond as is eliminating distractions. Turn off that social media, baby. Silence that phone. Take the clutter out of your workspace. Find a different workspace. NaNoWriMo is all about finding new hacks that might help you beyond. We'll be discussing that in a second. Um, Also find a writing buddy. Maybe that helps. And remember to embrace imperfection. Write first, edit later. That is one of my biggest tips. You don't want to be slowed down. You want momentum. Now talking about momentum, How many words are we talking about per day? If we want to reach 50,000 words in 30 days, that's a massive goal, right? How many words a day? 1667. That is the number to remember. But if that's too intimidating, adjust it. But all I have to say is when I use dictation and transcription, I can get 5,000 words down so easily. So this is something, it was. It feels like a cheat. I won, last year I won NaNoWriMo in about 10 days, I think. And I was both embarrassed and proud of myself. Uh, but I think that that's, you know, however it takes for you to get to your goal, but definitely break it down and see how much you need to go each day. And this is also why putting those word counts onto the NaNoWriMo website, it really helps because they show you how close you are to your goal. So it helps you to readjust how much you think you need to work day by day. Definitely, I recommend that during NaNoWriMo, you take breaks and you reward yourself and you stay healthy. You do not want to neglect your physical and mental health in any way. Having enough sleep, relaxing, having happiness, doing things that are fun on the side, all of these things really help you to keep believing in yourself and to not give up. Because when things are so rough and painful, why would you keep going? You're not, you know, some kind of a monk living in a cave somewhere. You have the right to have a life while you do NaNoWriMo. Now, here are some sneaky other little hacks that I have. I've talked about dictation that is number one with an outline. That really, really helps. But the outline is not only so that you can use the dictation. The outline also has another purpose. And that is you never want to be stopped. You want to have that momentum. If you have an outline, you can write scene by scene and you can pick only the scenes that you want to. So this is something that I did last year. There are some scenes that are much more challenging to write and that you're kind of dreading. Well, by writing scene by scene, only the scenes you want to, you don't write those right now. You'll write them later. And what I've found and what I've taught many of my clients is that you can do much easier connecting the dots when you have more scenes than when you've got this blank page and you're like, I have to write this really challenging scene and I don't even have what comes after it. So think about that. That's kind of interesting. Also, if you're completely stuck, write to writing prompts, but not just any up in the air writing prompts, write in situational writing prompts that actually might help with your book. And remember, you can also be writing parts of your book like the Bible, character descriptions, location descriptions. Some of this will make it into your book, but not all of it will make it in, but that's fine. That enters into the final word count if you decided that it does. Keep in mind that most of the stuff you write this month is going to be edited beyond recognition before the book is final final. So stop judging what is and isn't part of your word count. 
Now, let's talk about some of my writers who unfortunately started with NaNoWriMo and they faced challenges that lead them to quit before reaching their goal. I'm going to talk about some common mistakes that cause NaNoWriMo participants, including my writers, to give up. And these things are easily avoidable, so I want to talk about them today. Number one, setting unrealistic goals. One of the most common mistakes is setting a word count goal that's too ambitious. I'm telling you, 50,000 words a month can be easy for some, overwhelming for others. I have had writing clients where I've told them gently like, hey, do you want us to reevaluate a realistic writing goal? What do you think? Let's cut it down to 20,000, whatever. And they're like, no, 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 no. I'm going to do this. This is a challenge. I know that 50,000 words is your personal Mount Everest, but not everyone is made to climb Mount Everest. There are plenty of bodies along the way that prove that beyond a shade of a doubt, the cost is too high for some people. So I would say that be really realistic about what your goal is. There is no shame with adapting the goal to what works for you. The next thing that I've seen with my writers is the procrastination. They say they're going to do it and they're feeling guilty about it, but they start waiting until the last week of November to start writing. Consistent procrastination is what's going to really break you in your writing career. And if you're doing this even in the month of NaNoWriMo, you've got to take a hard look at it and see the reality of it. Your procrastination is not just going to lose NaNoWriMo for you, it's going to lose everything for you. So make sure that if you see yourself doing this in this month alone, take it as a microcosm of your writing career as a whole, and you definitely need to go talk to somebody, a writing coach or anything, to help you to move past this resistance, because this is going to be a consistent problem, not just this month, but throughout your career. Now, Overthinking and perfectionism is another thing. My writers who are trying to write flawless prose and they are frustrated because they're like, I don't understand. You know, I've been writing all day and I only have, you know, 500 words and I don't understand. How are some of these people writing so much? They're writing crap. And I'm not saying crap in a bad sense. I I write crap all the time. I, I know that I have to edit it afterwards. So that's really important. But that self-criticism, that negative self-talk, it can absolutely be paralyzing. So I know you're writing crap. You know you're writing crap. You're not allowed to call it crap because if you're kind of judging yourself, you're going to burn out. You're going to feel bad and it's not going to help you. And then you're going to start procrastinating and then we're going to end up losing NaNoWriMo. Nobody likes that. So that's no good. And also remember that life is unpredictable. Unexpected events can disrupt writing plans. So adapt to those changes. Don't make it an all or nothing thing, right? You have changes in your schedule. I am giving you permission right now to be like, oh my gosh, I did not know that my child was going to get sick right in the middle. I did not know that my spouse was going to invite 30 people to Thanksgiving or, oh my gosh, I didn't know I was going to get this homework assignment. Adapt to the changes in your schedule. Reevaluate what your goal might be. This is not quitting. This is being smart and never compare yourself to others, how much they're making progress. They have a different writing style. They have a different writing method and a different writing process. What works for one person may not work for another. Keep that in mind. So important. And Don't give in to the external pressure, even though that's kind of what it's about. Look at the internal pressure, but don't lose interest because you're getting disenchanted because this kind of sucks. I want you to really start to think that this is progress no matter what. Reward yourself. Celebrate your achievements because you are achieving something. Even if you don't win, even if you didn't reach your word count, you are doing better than you would have if you'd never tried to do this. Keep that in mind. Now, let's adopt some of the lessons from NaNoWriMo to improve our writing throughout the year. I think this is so important. NaNoWriMo really provided some lessons for me. It's provided lessons for many of my authors. And I think there's some valuable lessons from NaNoWriMo that you can apply year round. Now, you don't need to win NaNoWriMo to keep doing this, but I feel that participating and seeing how it goes 
I think that that is something that can be super, super useful. So the first thing is setting clear goals. You know how you have the specific word count goal for NaNoWriMo? Establishing achievable goals throughout the year that are ambitious, but that are feasible. This can really help you to stay motivated and keep moving forward. Another thing that NaNoWriMo really helps you to do is that it helps you to make the most of your writing time. So first of all, you really learn that creating a writing routine helps, that being consistent helps. You start to see how writing a little bit each day actually builds up a lot. Now, it's not realistic for some of us to write every day. Even I do not write every day sometimes, but man, having that NaNoWriMo push, it helps you to apply these time management techniques such as the Pomodoro technique or finding any little moment in your day to make the most of your writing time. I kind of find that we can carry those lessons through to the rest of the year. That also includes eliminating distractions. I didn't realize how important it was to do this until NaNoWriMo forced me to. So now it's something that I try to do as much as possible when I'm working on my writing. Another thing NaNoWriMo has taught me is to silence my inner critic. It's normal for your first draft to not be perfect. And with NaNoWriMo, you have no choice but to embrace imperfection and carrying that through to the rest of your writing career helps a lot. To learn to edit later is massive and also to keep accountable and to seek that feedback and support and keep adapting to life changes. As authors, we're always learning and growing and I think it's always good to be taking stock of what works, what doesn't, what could be improved. We do this after NaNoWriMo almost naturally and so I think that that is something that carries through to the rest of the year. You think, wow, I'm going to apply these lessons that I've learned and I'm going to use them to refine my process and what, you know, what I do, what I don't do, not only in my writing, but also then in my author platform stuff. And also keeping your writing projects varied, reminding yourself that you can work on different genres, you can work on different projects. That's not just for NaNoWriMo. You are the boss of your author career and you can decide what you want to do and what you don't want to do. Also, I think that for many of us, NaNoWriMo, finishing that 50,000 word draft, it's kind of our first taste of achievement. For those of us who've never finished a novel before, I think that it absolutely changes everything in your mind. You're like, wow, I finally figured out that I can do this. Motivation is everything. And knowing that you're able to do something is something that feeds your motivation like nothing else. Finally, the last thing I think with NaNoWriMo is that you really get these great problem-solving skills. Instead of having a little plot hole or a little character issue completely block you, you're forced to solve problems on the fly. You're forced to just move on and figure it out. And this can be beneficial as a lesson to the rest of your writing career. You don't get completely frozen by a tiny issue. You decide to pivot, move, decide. As I always say, this is just one book in your career. If you've made a decision that doesn't work at the end, you can always edit it out or you can always do better in the next book. So that's really massive. Now let's talk about once you finish NaNoWriMo, so many writers, including me, are like, yay, I'm done. And you sit on this 50,000 word draft and sometimes it goes nowhere. As I've admitted, I have one right now in my computer sitting there. And yes, it's important to take a break after NaNoWriMo. I think that's really, really important. But <laughs> I think that you want to Think about the important steps to take after NaNoWriMo while you continue on your writing journey. There are definitely some things to do. Now, literary agents will tell me that they hate the month of December, January because they're getting all these NaNoWriMo manuscripts of authors who are like, yay, that's great. I'm done. Here's my manuscript. You'll be able to tell that it's a good story and you'll move past the imperfect imperfections. Let me just race my way in so that I can you know, get in ahead of the other NaNoWriMo people. Oh, gosh you can tell when something's been just spat out and not reworked. So you're going to need to revise. So definitely, first of all, give yourself a well-deserved break. You want to step away from your manuscript, gain some distance and perspective. 
This doesn't mean sit around and do nothing for whenever you give yourself a break. You can be working on your author platform. You can be working on a cover. You can be working on another piece of work. But I definitely want you to give yourself a break because fresh eyes are crucial. And also during this break, you can reflect on your accomplishment and celebrate your hard work. This is really important. You've got to be proud of what you did. But we need the objectivity for when we do the next step, which is revising and editing. I would say that when you revise and edit your NaNoWriMo novel, you're going to want to do what I always say, and people hate this, but it doesn't matter. Go through your novel, look at the scenes, and create a new outline based on what you have. This is going to help you to focus on structural and developmental editing first, addressing plot holes, character development, and pacing of your overall story. You're going to see which scenes you're missing, which scenes might be taken out, and what needs to be expanded on. After that is when you can move on to line editing and proofreading. And then you're going to be seeking feedback, which is your beta readers or your writing coach or your editor. All of this is really crucial and fine tuning is a thing and it takes time. While we are revising, but taking our time, we also want to be researching our publishing options. This is so important. Do you want to do traditional self-publishing or hybrid? Make a plan for how you want to move on with this. This also often means developing a query letter. All of this stuff is included in my From Idea to Published in Six Months. This is a process and I do not want you to rush it. So go check out that course. And even if you don't have the funds or the time to do the whole course, doing the DIY author worksheets will definitely help you to research your publishing options and also develop all of that stuff. Don't forget the author platform. I know many of you, that's not your favorite part, but that's fine. But definitely keep thinking about how to keep bringing those lessons of NaNoWriMo back throughout your writing career. Listen, if you decide to do this, I would love for you to email me. Let me know how you're doing. Even if you're not one of my current clients, I always answer every email. So head over to my website, creativeandwritingcoach.com, and you can send me an email from there, or you can join my mailing list and you'll be getting emails from me that you can respond to. Or you can always go to onlinecoursesforwriters.com and that's where you're going to find the downloads for that masterclass from idea to published in six months or for the DIY author, which is a stripped down version of that, but where you get a lot of that really good content that is going to push you forward so that you can make your writing project come to fruition during NaNoWriMo and beyond. NaNoWriMo, if you're doing the From Idea to Published course, The NaNoWriMo really enters into months one and two, so you'll be able to condense your months one and two of that course to save yourself a little bit of time as you go. So good luck with that. Let me know if you're doing NaNoWriMo. Go check the YouTube series that I did. That might be fun for you, and I look forward to being with you next time on the How to Be an Author podcast. If you have any pressing writing-related questions or would like to be featured on the How to Be an Author podcast, please feel free to reach out on my website, creativeandwritingcoach.com.